It is the podcast you all know and love, or maybe not love. It is Derek G Speaks Volumes. And this is a long and winding exploration of the enduring, long lasting, to yet to be seen influence of Tyler, the, the creator. My name is Derek G. And as I haven't probably mentioned in a long time, I like to have some sort of thesis, some sort of point of view to explore on this podcast. I hope you are well. I am well too. I'm learning about how to use my camera more. I recently had a lesson. <laughs> so hopefully things will start to look more and more and more professional over time. If this video ends up turning out looking terrible, then clearly I've learned nothing. I hope you are well. But this this podcast has been knocking around in my brain for a long time because I've wanted to talk about Tyler the Creator. And I've also been experimenting a lot with how I make this podcast and how punchy or short or long that it's going to be. And I've decided to throw all those cards out the window and just go and talk about it because I've been a Tyler the Creator fan for, I guess, 10, 11, 12 years, and I have seen his growth and development and rise to superstardom. And now that we are, I think, safe to say on the other side of his peak, I, I've been really impressed as a music fan. I don't want to sound condescending. I, I've just been in awe is probably the better word by what he's been able to achieve. And really, I wanted to explore just how impactful he is and will be on this and the next generation of musicians. I think for many of you, it's it's very clear. For some of you, it might not be clear at all. Some of you, you might not really be a fan of his. And maybe this is a little starter pack or understanding or contextualizing about Tyler, the creator, because I don't think it's... Uh, he is for everyone. Obviously, if you if you know and love Tyler, then this podcast will nothing be nothing new to you. So how I'm going to break it down is I'm going to talk about his backstory, some of his influences. I'm going to talk about the influence that he's had and the predictions for him and the future. Okay? Okay. So let's talk about the backstory first. And again, if you know this podcast, this is not some Wikipedia page. You can read all about it and learn about his heart past and history, I want to talk about more of my observations and interactions with Tyler, the creator. So I first came across him like many, many of us back in around 2012 when Yonkers came out. One of the most, in, one of the, the best music videos, in my opinion. I just think it is so singular. It's so clear. It's so simple. It's so impactful. If you don't know it, he is sitting on a stool it's black and white he's looking at the camera he's rapping uh the kind there's this effect where it kind of goes in and out of focus and he eats a cockroach and then hangs himself <laughs> yeah and obviously you watch that yonkers amazing track as well very simple and it's imme immediately arresting, immediately exciting, immediately like, what is this? His voice was different. It was super low. It was a really harsh beat. And unlike anything else coming out at the moment, it was kind of almost a bit punk in certain ways. And led me down a rabbit hole. The first rabbit hole, I was like, who directed this? Because I would have been, I guess, what, 24-ish? On the tail end of my, my youthful exuberance. And he, I, I looked at, I thought, who's directing this? And looked it up and it said Wolf Haley. And I was like, who's Wolf Haley? And then Googled and Googled and I couldn't find anything. And it turns out that it's his alter ego and he directed it. And, but that took me a long time to figure out. I, w I was really obsessed with trying to find out who the director was because I just thought like whoever made this and directed this is, is a genius. And led me down a rabbit hole to find out find the odd future tape to find out uh, Tyler's first mixtape, finding Earl's first mixtape, finding out about Hodgy Beats, Left Brain, Domogenesis, all a mellow hype, all of this like subterranean world that had already been built prior to my knowledge and fandom. And when I think about artists and musicians, I think that like that foundation of having that all that stuff there is such a great thing. And artists can't design that. You just got to put music out. But I think that 
I became a fan at that moment. It took me like a few days to be a super fan of Tide of the Creator and Odd Future because it was all there. And then there were these like, after that, they had these crazy interviews and they were being flown over to London. They were being flown over to New York and everything was crazy and everything was moving so fast. And you really felt like you were part of this thing. As someone who didn't visit, uh, who hadn't visited New York in 10, 12 years at that point and hadn't, wasn't going to visit New York again until a good 12 years after discovering Odd Future. So as a person that has lived on the internet, there was so much underneath it all to discover. I think the most interesting and compelling thing about Tyler, the creator from the very beginning was obviously he was the most compelling. He was the leader. He was the one that was like calling the shots and, and stealing the spotlight in many ways. It was Frank and Earl, or Earl wasn't there at the time. Frank was sitting in the corner quietly, but you could tell that he had a vision. And he said early, early on, I'm going to win a Grammy. And I remember seeing that probably around the age of 24 going, all right, guy, like settle down. Like we haven't seen anything from you yet. What do you know? Lo and behold, probably 10 years later, he, he, he won that award and it goes to show what sort of force of nature he was. He's essentially the creative director of Odd Future. He's essentially the leader and, and has had the longest and most successful career outside of Frank Ocean. Now, I looked up a couple fun facts because, again, this is not a Wikipedia page, but he used to work at FedEx for just under two weeks and at Starbucks for over two years. I think I've seen some pictures of him at Starbucks, which is pretty funny. And he took his stage name from his MySpace page where he used to post creative endeavors. There you go. I think what's really interesting about him is that he's not only a talented producer, rapper, lyricist, that's more of a stretch, but also a creative that knows how to dress, how to present visuals and overall design a package that is cohesive. My favorite releases of his would have to be his early stuff. I hate to say it, uh, Bastard and Goblin. I think that his uh, subsequent albums after that first, especially Wolf and Cherry Bomb were undercooked and very much in development and is in that kind of sweet spot of that young and old phase of artists where Bastard and Goblin was that naivety and just making things without overthinking it and comes off really raw and I really love early work of artists. I think Flower Boy and Igor. Flower Boy is the most established, the most commercial, I would almost say it's like his channel Orange in a sense. And then Igor is his most artistic work. If I was to listen to one or two of those, I would say Flower Boy is a more listenable record. Ego is more conceptual, although as much as I appreciate and enjoy it from an artistry perspective, I don't find it entirely enjoyable to listen to often, personally. And immediately when he came on the scene, you could tell that his influences were really of its time and eclectic. You could tell he was a disciple of NERD, uh, Chad Hugo and Pharrell Williams, and Pharrell Williams in general as to his his beats and, so and sounds. There's a song called Inside of Clouds, which I think he sampled a Pharrell or NERD song, which is not out on streaming services. Great song, and you can tell how much was influenced by the Neptunes. Obviously, he was influenced by Kanye West and especially the kind of college era of music. And then, look, you can pull from where you like. Andre 3000 in terms of the creativity and expressiveness. Eminem in terms of just that really youthful break everything and offend everyone attitude. Virgil Abloh, he's been inspired by from an entrepreneurial and a uh, polymath creative in many ways. And then... You look down the list of greats, whether it's Herbie Hancock or Stevie Wonder or Q-Tip that he's been inspired by. And he's mentioned at previous times before. Now, when he first came out, he was very provocative and offensive and was banned from a lot of countries and seen as a bit of a, a threat to a lot of places. And he was very homophobic, which I think was uh, confronting and as a young person and as a fan, I felt like he was just being a troll. Obviously, being a troll and being homophobic is not cool because you are 
putting things out in the world that are, are influencing someone and someone that is not you will take that and, and take that the wrong way. I would say though that there was something underlying to that that kind of felt like there was more to the story. And, he went, and when he ends up coming out as, I think it's, he's bisexual, that it all makes more sense. I remember Tegan and Sarah came out quite hard, you know, denouncing Tyler, the creator. And I would love to hear their stance on it now, only because he he's clearly a, a, a queer of nature and um, sp speaks more to the internal frustration with his own identity that he was doing those things. I don't condone it, but I think it's really interesting to have seen where he has ended up. Now, this point of this podcast is to talk about his enduring influence. And I think that I want to break it down into where he is influential, starting with the visionary aspect of him as a creator, Tyler, the creator. I would say that he is a visionary because he understands and has a vision for the full process of his artistry and career, whereby he's always manufacturing and directing and packaging his artwork that isn't basic, that is more complex and is trying to weave through messages, through his sounds, his inspirations, is through his music videos, through his eras that he goes through. And I think that he is very intentional about what he does. And I think despite the kind of manic boyishness that he's presented, he has always presented himself visually as well as sonically in a way that's kind of pushing him and his sound and image forward. And you can see that when you look at Bastard and when you look at Goblin and where he's wearing Supreme and he was wearing Supreme for a few years yet, that he was still maturing. And you could tell that with his later records, Cherry Bomb Wolf, et cetera, that he was trying to find a sound, but wasn't quite there and it was still crude. But when he got to Flower Boy, you could tell it was a real concerted effort to take leaps and bounds ahead of himself in order to achieve where he wanted to go, which was to be respected, highly regarded and a Grammy winner. And his songwriter songwriting definitely elevated to the point where Igor, which is full conceptual mode where, you know, you've got, where you've got Kanye West wearing his red suit. You have other artists in other eras, whether it's David Byrne or David Bowie, and you've got, Tyler, the creator, turning up in a pink suit and a blonde wig. And it was kind of strange for someone of his ilk to be doing that. But I respect it because not many people in hip hop have done that to the point where you're, you are creating a character. The closest thing would be Andre 3000. He was still Andre 3000, but all wigs and was definitely more maximal in style. And Tyler was willing to go there and then kind of went completely back to old school, kind of almost boom bap DJ drama, hip hop on Call Me If You Get Lost, which says that, okay, he's done that and he's achieved more conceptual things. The next concept for him was going to be more old school, which is its own creative direction in a way. You look at artists that are bringing back an old school sound, whether it's like Coyle Ray, that there is a vision to understanding that you can use these things and as, the, as an aesthetic. And he, he appreciates the need for quality in art. And you can see that he has always curated his image, even though it might not seem like on the surface, he is someone that is on and then off and then goes into the bunker and does things. And essentially, I think the perfect artist like I have illustrated in previous podcasts, is someone like him who is a creative director, is an art director, is a producer, is an artist, a lyricist, and an entrepreneur. And I think that is a hard, hard nexus to hit. And, and, and you know, I come from design school, right? And I can be a content creator, but I don't, I can't be an artist or I don't have that ability. So to have all those inbuilt in one is, when people talk about unicorns, I think that's really what they're talking about. Like, you know, Kanye West is similar, or I think uh, most artists don't have that ability to synthesize all of the uh, mediums in order to communicate their world view. And again, comparing him to Kanye West, I would say that he is the closest thing to Kanye West in terms of an artist who's able to stitch together music and fashion, music and art, and elevate themselves in hip hop 
in a more abstract sense to build worlds where you've got my beautiful dark twisted fantasy where it was all very high art and conceptual in a sense and i think tyler has definitely been influenced by that and directing his own music music videos and creating these worlds that are very very rich and beautiful and if you were to compare him to people you could compare him to the likes of Frank, you could compare him to the likes of Solange, you could compare him to the likes of Kanye, like I said, Prince, Stevie Wonder. I think that these people he would like to be considered in the same vein of as someone that is able to do it all and produce it all and pull it off. And fair to say, whilst he doesn't have the uh, radio hits of Raspberry Beret or Power by Kanye West, he does have the influence which I want to go over next. Let's start with his influence on fashion. Not the first and most obvious thing to pick up on. We should probably start with music, but I'm going to start with fashion. I think because of his persona and how he carried himself and embodied the music that he made, he was able to make and lead the charge of supreme being the brand that it is and i know that is going out there and putting that all on one person but to a global community supreme i know and i'm sure was very cool and credible in la in new york but from a global standpoint supreme being the brand of odd future at the very beginning t-shirts and hats and everyone wearing it and everyone wanting to represent it had this waterfall effect that lasted almost 10 years where kids adults everyone that's catching on to it wanted to wear that brand because of tyler because of odd future and the branding of being associated with supreme taught tyler the creator just how powerful it is to embody his music through fashion and how lucrative that can be so started golf weighing then had golf lafleur and has his brands that essentially in the early days of golf wing, it was a version of Supreme with logo, caps, t-shirts, hoodies, very simple, just said golf. People were fans. You would say it's, it is an elevated, if not similar term to merch, but created a brand that people wanted to get behind and support. But now with Golf Lafleur, and he started this through collaborations as well, through with Converse and brands that had a similar type of worldview. And that was that kind of skater DIY ethos has turned that into Golf Lafleur and his fashion style currently, which he has this kind of romantic notion where he's inspired by people like Wes Anderson and has these kind of bellhop type outfits. But I have seen, I see more Tyler the Creator clones in any city I'm in than any other type of like young male, especially uh, influence. So you have the loafers and the white socks, you have the tweed pants or the brown pants, you have the uh, sweater vests and t-shirts, you have little trinkets hanging off your bags. You have necklaces with little jewels on it. And look, I am stating these things like they're fact. These are my opinion, but I do f see that Tyler, the creator is not just for someone that's into hip hop, it's someone that is into the alternative space, alternative pop space. So if you are into Rex Orange County or Grant Perez, that you still feel a part of this world, which is like, I don't want to wear either baggy pants or skinny jeans. I am different from this sort of person that is, you know, getting tattoos and, and is probably a bit more romantic in a sense. And that look is there for them. And that look was led by Tyler, the creator, which has not only ushered in this like skater slash dandy slash grandpa look, but has also influenced to the point where he is a watch influencer, horology. He is a person that has made young people into watches because Tyler, the creator has a massive Cartier watch collection. And I think he admitted himself in a magazine that he, a lot of them don't work. And, but now to the point where Cartier releases a new watch and Tyler, the creator is at the top of the list to receive or give be given the opportunity to purchase the watch and introduces a younger generation to 
collecting designer watches that aren't Rolexes, that are Cartier crashes, which are a bit more unusual and is is something that I've seen, especially amongst young male youth in the fashion scene, Cartier be the watch of choice. And am I correlating? Sure. Do I think I'm right? I do. So let's talk about directing and music videos. Ever since he started his career, he has been directing, whether it's his music videos, whether it's a TV show, Loiter Squad. And I think a lot of artists now aspire to be that as well which wasn't something that Tyler the Creator invented, but I think people knowing that there is a vision to execute your output and not rely on anyone else. And the only person that knows your stuff as good as you is you. And I can't say that there are many other standout artists that are artists and directors as well, but I will get onto that very shortly with who has influenced. Actually, I'm going to get onto it now. So he has influenced so many artists of the next generation. And I would say next generation, anywhere between 18 and 24 are the people that looked up to Tyler, the creator and embodied it. And there is no better example or lineage or child of Tyler, the creator than Billie Eilish. Now on the surface, you might say, what are you talking about? Totally different music and sound, but if you look at especially the early interviews of Billie Eilish when she started to pop off, she was playing this character. She was playing this character that was very Tyler the Creator, and she was obsessed with Tyler the Creator. And she said to herself, "Which is very much, I don't give a fuck. Everything's dopey. You know, I kind of speak. I'm always calling people bro. I'm trying to acting out and all those sort of things." And and very early on. Billie Eilish was directing her music videos and she said she was inspired by Tyler, the creator. And I think that the enduring legacy of Tyler, the creator above many things is the attitude that he brought. If you look at the early Nardwai interviews, if you look at the early interviews of him, he represented someone that knew who he was and found everything funny and found the whole industry and all of the questions funny. If someone says, what is the inspiration behind your album? What was the thought process? If I was to come in and ask those sort of things, he would just laugh in their face and be like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, I think my music sucks. (laughs) But it was that kind of compelling thing that represents youth that in many ways is punk in the YouTube era where back in the day, maybe it was people trashing hotel rooms and trashing sets and Tyler, the creator, was just making fun of everything that was coming his way. And Billie Eilish definitely became that. She still has that kind of attitude in her. And I think that that is a really huge influence that he has had on artists, especially. You have artists like Lil Nas X, Kevin Abstract, Juice World, people that have a world that they've built sonically, visually, through music videos, through art, that... They have all been inspired by Tyler, the creator, and unlocked what he has, what they are able to produce. I also think what's interesting about him and the enduring influence is his influence on creativity and on creatives and on creative culture. So he's done a series of sit down interviews with Converse, one in L.A., I believe, and one in Sydney. And you had young people asking him questions about how do I further my career? How do I start my brand? Things like that. And because he is someone that has a very close relationship between his consciousness and subconsciousness, he's able to inspire and direct the youth, the creative youth and the new generation through his instincts and feelings and he doesn't understand how people can be self-conscious and one not want to start things because he's one of those people that of course is self-conscious but that connection between creativity and output is very close together and those clips i've seen so much on different social media platforms of him inspiring and talking directly to people like you and i saying the only thing that's stopping you is you that if someone's saying no that means that You've got to do it yourself. And it's a really interesting position that he's found himself in within creative culture, especially because Kanye West, uh, Pharrell Williams don't possess that space of being a thought leader in creativity. But I think a lot of young creators look up to him because of that polymath ability to succeed in multiple places, film, fashion, music. And that thought leadership is someone that he has become a very clear and apparent voice for in 
the creative community. So as you can see so far, I'm really painting a picture of the different ways that he's been able to influence culture, whether it's through attitude, whether it's through allowing you to see what you're capable of achieving or how you can turn your brand into something of a fashion brand and of a aesthetic. The third and final influence that he has had an impact and just impressive amounts of accolades is through music. So obviously he's won Grammys, but also he is an alternate rap artist that isn't mainstream and isn't on radio. And if we asked our parents to name one Tyler the Creator track, they would not know, but that doesn't matter. And I think that he trailblazed this idea of being successful without the normal expectations of how you be successful. Even people like Blackpink and BTS go to Sirius XM in the US to get radio play because everyone knows that if you get on radio, that is your easiest way to succeed. And I don't know how many tracks Tyler the Creator has had on mainstream radio. And what does that mean? He has music that is not entirely palatable, that it changes all the time. His voice and his delivery isn't exactly something that people want to hear on their drive time commute, but he's been able to sell out shows around the world despite that. And not only that, he's been able to represent a alternate queer rap culture that was still very much stigmatized. And I think that one of the iconic moments that I think will go down in history for him as something to look back on in the archives is when he was on Funk Flex's show and he was freestyling and he was basically actively attempting to flirt with Funk Flex. And Funk Flex, Flex you know, really stalwart New York radio host was a bit uncomfortable. He's like, bro, what are you saying? You want to kiss me? But Tyler, the creator is someone that is breaking boundaries and challenging people, artists, hosts, presenters, cultures to look at a queer kid and accept it and be okay with it and laugh with him because he doesn't take himself seriously. So why are you taking him seriously? And you know, you have people like Kevin Abstract taking that on board. Now I think that homophobia is still rife in hip hop, but then Tyler the Creator doing things like working with NBA Young Boy, someone that feels like it's totally opposite worlds and saying like, hey, I'm a fan of you and I really respect you and I really think that we should work together is breaking down these barriers of people being open and okay to working with artists like that to the point where Lil Nas X is a pop act and I think there's a lot of stigma still but I think that Tyler the Creator's enduring impact is also going to be on how rap has moved forward not only in an alternative space but in a gender and identity space. He is really and I don't want to be too hyperbolic about this but I think that he does represent someone that is able to challenge and push young musicians to experiment, develop their sound and their look and image to create characters that might be eager one day because I think that every generation needs someone to push the boundaries and to push the state in which an artist is perceived and I think eager is a prime example of an artist that you don't expect to appear just similar to how Ziggy Stardust exists. It's like, I'm challenging what you think I should be, especially in the uh, heavily male driven rap world. Why can't you wear a blonde wig and play this character called Igor and walk around these places looking a bit goofy, but someone needs to do that in order to present a new world. And I think like, say for example, Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar is a genius, but always plays a character within the stereotypes that he's known for, whereas Tyler, the creator is always pushing himself. So a prime example of this would be he, there was an interview where he was talking about Mac DeMarco and Tyler, the creator said, I love Mac DeMarco. I just want to see him experiment more, which I think comes from a place of love and comes from a personal place of Tyler seeing that Mac DeMarco is a generational influence, but also has been making similar sounding music for his whole entire career. But that is another podcast, to be honest, which illustrates to me a person that is one, Tyler the Creator is more like Kanye West, always trying to push himself, push his sound, push his audience to find new and innovative things. And then you've got Mac DeMarco, who's someone that is happy in his space, likes making the music that he likes and is content and happy to make that music. I think there are two types of artists. One is not greater than the other, but I think that Tyler expecting and hoping for Mac DeMarco to be different is not his point. But I think Tyler, the creator, is one of those people that pushes himself and therefore presents upcoming artists to see the world that you can reinvent yourself and be someone that people didn't expect to be.
In terms of music influence as well, he is the master of music and marketing. Now, he's been on that creative leadership tip where he'll talk about how he doesn't understand how people are just out here not promoting their music and he promotes it so much. But also he knows how to make noise, but he doesn't make noise. He used to make noise through Yonkers, right? And the kind of shock tactics. And then he used to make noise by just being a bit controversial and a bit rambunctious, but I don't think he was trying to be marketing as much as he knew that he, he likes being that person. He's very vociferous and he's he's out on Twitter saying all these crazy things. But now I feel like he's he's a grown man and how he makes his noise now is through art. He doesn't make his noise through calling people out and being crazy. He's honest. And when he's in interviews, he knows that his honesty will translate to virality because people want to hear what he has to say. But he's, I don't think he's a, he's matured to the point where he isn't going to call out people. He's not going to be homophobic or anything like that or say things that are completely out of line because you can see in interviews that he's had with either, either Zane Lowe or Rap Radar, he thinks about all these things and he thinks about how he's perceived and he thinks about how other rappers perceive themselves and he likes to challenge that and he likes to wear his heart on his sleeve talk about the people he loves sometimes talk about people he doesn't give people props where people aren't comfortable to do so it's like how he brought out drake at his festival and everyone booed him but tyler's like i love drake why don't people talk about loving drake and as as a lot of you know especially on my podcast a lot of people uh are not fans of drake because he is people find him corny people find him fake but Tyler's like, I love of Drake. He's one of the most important artists of our generation, which I agree with, and is willing to put his heart on, on his sleeve, dropping in and presenting the sponsor of today. It is me and my Patreon, patreon.com forward slash G underscore Derek. It is the place where you can enjoy Solid Air, my weekly radio show. I've had a sample special. I've had a all-female special. I have had a hip-hop special. I've just, I curate music every week that I've discovered as part of, I'll probably be playing Tyler the Creator on next week's show because it's influenced by this podcast. I often play things that are inspired by me and that I discover and hopefully you can join in and support what I do. It's at patreon.com forward slash G underscore Derek. How do I conclude this? Hopefully I've illustrated some things here of his enduring influence. So he's influential because he does what he wants to do and wants to push himself and that influences creative culture it, cre it influences music in terms of attitude in terms of vision in terms of execution in terms of evolution it influences people in terms of fashion in terms of expressing themselves in terms of turning a merch company into an aesthetic into a look into a way of expressing oneself in an alternate landscape that now lots of young people embody. He influences people in terms of marketing, in terms of confidence in your abilities, in terms of promoting yourself and standing by the art and also creating stuff when you know that you're the best person to create and believe in your art. And then he's also maturing to the point where he is a thought leader as Rick Rubin has decided to become a thought leader and inspirational person in the creative space, Tyler the Creator is here at in his early 30s being that person for the next generation that looks up to him wanting to know how. Now, the problem here is that I think a lot of young artists that are looking for those answers don't have that quality, which is not their fault. But I think the Tyler inherently, he was drawn from a young age. He had a MySpace called The Creator, where it was always about curation and collection and expression. I think that he, again, is a unicorn and exists in that space. Now, I think like many of these artists, there is going to be an evolution with Tyler, the creator. I think that he is going to have an, another phase that I look forward to. And I can't predict the future, but I can look at the past and see what has come in front of him and see what might eventuate for him. Obviously, he's going to keep making music. I do think that we are past his prime and peak, and that's not controversial to say. So I think that he could definitely try and go into production producing other people's works, try to be a Pharrell, try to have a label, sign people, develop them, produce for them and say, hey, I am here to put on, put you on to the next generation. Pharrell's done it. Dr. Dre's done it. There's been multiple producers that can handpick, curate 
and then identify and bring and usher in that new generation. I'd love to see that for him. I don't think that that's in his future because I think that he's too much of an individual to step back in the limelight and give that, hand that mantle over to someone else. Even though he's been championing people like Tizo Touchdown or Tierra Whack, I don't think that that is in his future. As much as I would love to see what Tyler, the creator, does in terms of producing for other people, I think that I would love to see him do films long form not just short films. I'd love to see him make and direct films, write films. I think that he's very inspired by Call Me By Your Name. I think he's very inspired by Wes Anderson. I think that he has the eye, he has the determination, whether he has the storytelling chops is remains to be seen. But I think that that could be something that I would not be surprised if he disappears for two years, comes back with a movie. That would be so cool and a different way to express because he's done fashion like Kanye West has done fashion. He's done music. And what is that next stage? None of these artists have been capable of stepping out there and being a director. Now, I think of all of the hip hop artists or artists that I've seen that could be a successful director. Tyler, the creator, age 45, peak director, Jordan Peele style. Come on, I could totally see that happening. The third and probably most obvious one that you're probably guessing as well would be a fashion house. Pharrell, creative director, men's Louis Vuitton. He could be working for, you know, isn't isn't Nigo at Kenzo or something? There could be a Tyler, the creator, working at Prada as the creative director. I would say that at the moment, people are cottoning onto those Virgil, there's Pharrell, these kind of name brand creative directors and him doing it right now is probably not the look you want but I see a world in which he could want to be more into fashion and not be as much of a musician that would be interesting it wouldn't be as surprising if I was to wish any of these predictions on him I would love to see him as a record label head and I would love to see him as a director bringing up the young alternative scene as he matures would be so exciting. I don't see him as an author. I don't see him as a, I don't see him as a public speaker. I don't see him as a politician. And I think that's very good for him. But what do you think? What do you think about Tyler, the creator? Do you think that he is as influential as I think? Do you think that he will go on to bigger and better things? Do you think that this is maybe the end of the line for him? I don't think so. I think that he is going to have a long career to come. Pharrell Williams has endured and has been able to have skincare lines, fashion with Bape, and now Louis Vuitton, and always will have his production. And I think that there is no signs that Tyler, the creator, is going to slow down. And I think he'll want to be one of those people that wants to win an Oscar for directing, wants to win an Oscar for acting. And he has acted and he can act. So I think that's another one. I'm going to put that on the list. Winning an Oscar as an actor, I can see that on the cards for sure. But what do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm glad that I could put this down on a recording somewhere. Hopefully it wasn't too messy, but I think that he is miraculous and a genius and someone that I don't think is underrated in any sense, but someone that hasn't been celebrated for just how impactful he has been. More so impactful than, say, Drake on the culture at large. I would say that Drake has influenced music but not the culture at large. And that I think to summarize and to conclude is the one single factor that Tyler, the creator has on everyone else that he is able to impact almost every creative medium he touches. I wish him the very best. I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. This is Derek G Speaks Volumes. Thank you so much for listening.